Greetings everyone on YouTube, it's Alex here. I think I might stick with that intro for now, but anyway, well, long story short, um, when I was younger, I used to have a lot of these, which you are staring at, and these are the traditional garden solar light. I was kind of obsessed with those things, along with my obsession with owning as, as many bloody torches, or as the Americans say it, flashlights as physically possible. And I also like taking them apart. Also, for seemingly no reason back then, I just took things apart. And I did nothing, like, I did nothing useful with the components that I salvaged. Why? I have no idea. It was just a childhood obsession back then. But recently, I have been, well, as, well, hence I even have a DIY playlist on my channel, but I am steadily making things once again. Uh, so I suppose I've come full circle. I take things apart, and then I make other things with them. I mean, I've been taking lots of things apart, and this solar pan uh, solar panel, <laughs> this solar light is no exception. Now, I have quite a few of these outside in the garden right now, although most of them are just hooked into my standard solar setup, uh, which I've done showcases before. Um, if I just grab one, eh, apologies for the messy keyboard and the messy desk, but uh, like these small ones, which I have yet to implement, just simply have a wire poking out the bottom here so I can just connect them up to the standard solar um, set up here in a daisy chain fashion and also, you know, a bit of hot glue and conformal coating on the components to seal the deal to make these things actually last the test of time. Um, but one thing I have done with this particular, um, this particular light, and this was basically an experiment that actually has, I would say, turned out to be a success, but this particular light being a larger one, I have decided to outfit this thing with supercapacitors to see how well this would work. And, well, it actually does work surprisingly well. Now, this thing, obviously, I, well, since I only have my left hand available, pretty much, uh, I can't actually show you this thing taken apart, but I have taken a few pictures of this thing in the assembly process, and that is the inside of it. Yes, it's a freaking mess, especially with all those bundled up wires, um, but as you can see, there are three super caps. Now, annoyingly, um, well, I had the 50 uh, farad cap on the right there. I had that one for some time. Um, but I was thinking, well, I could utilize the extra space. Essentially, I used my soldering iron to uh, quite cleanly, I don't, actually, I don't mind saying, uh, cut out the battery compartment. So I had another space other side of the, of the circuit board that you can see. Uh, and I couldn't actually find another, any 50 farad caps on eBay, and I didn't want to have to order from China or the US this time, as to save time. But I found an eBay seller selling 25 farad caps, and as you can see on the left there, uh, we have two of those end-to-end -end, uh, hooked up rather um, ghetto style with just some extra wire and you know stuff like that. Um, the, I mean, all those caps are in parallel, if you couldn't tell. Now, what I'm saying, uh, another thing I did to try and keep this thing going, because like, I kind of wanted this solar light, in theory anyway, uh, this thing should last, assuming the weather doesn't sort of gain ingress uh, into this thing and, you know, rust out anything, uh, as well as assuming nothing just breaks because of the heat or maybe if that solar panel might overcharge the cap slightly because that's the point the panel had to be replaced from the default one as the uh, the default panel uh was only what it was a crappy two volt um panel but then it was only charging a double a um you know one of those standard nickel metal hydride cells 1.2 volts so you know it wasn't exactly charging anything t uh crazy um, but this is a 3 volt panel, and technically the caps are 2.7 volts. Now, I have no idea, in, if, in all honesty, if the uh, the little chip, the little controller chip, actually has maybe uh, an anti-feedback diode to drop the voltage, so I actually have no idea. And 3 volts, you know, it's not going to overcharge the caps by much, assuming there is no diode drop or anything like that. I, I, didn't, I should have probably checked that, um, but as there isn't, uh, or at least I'm not too sure... 0.3 volts freaking overcharge, assuming that panel actually can charge up super caps over 3 volts or just charge them. Actually, even charging it to full extent anyway, as this is 3 volts at about 100 and, it's either 160 or 120 milliamps this panel uh, is rated at. But the thing is with super capacitors is the closer they get to their um, rated voltage, as far as I understand them, uh, you could I would say it's their leakage current increases. Uh, basically, super caps don't like to stay very, you know, they, they don't like to stay at their charge state unless you ha happen to have a, a pretty, re you know, modest uh, input current to keep the voltage high. Uh, to most of these 2.7 volt caps, they much prefer to 
hold charge and actually hold charge for a very long time at two volts. Uh, obviously, that does depend on the cap versus um, the uh, 2.7. So, you know, if this thing gets, you know, this thing gets charged up to the max, you know, it probably won't stay like that for very long. But, you know, um, when I was testing this and I just uh, charged up these caps externally to test the runtime. Because runtime would be another valid question. A hundred farads worth of capacitance here. How long does that last for? A lot of people are going to be asking for. And I have not exactly used a stopwatch, but from my couple t uh, test runs, it lasts for over nine hours. Uh, at least with this particular setup, which is pretty damn impressive for capacitors, uh, to be honest. I have no idea how long a, the standard AA would have lasted for, assuming that was fully charged. And not to mention the AA's... Uh, or just nickel metal hydride cells uh, that these these panel uh, f the, yeah these solar lights use they will obviously degrade over time due to probably overcharging is usually a common cause uh, the weather gaining ingress moisture it starts to rust temperature as well you know and the thing is with these caps they shouldn't in theory wear out at all because everything here just the whole unit top and bottom every conceivable little um, you know possible trace there has many layers of conformal coating. I'm, I deliberately have sealed this thing, hopefully weather tight. Um, although I will probably, um, oh yeah, there it is. It is lighting up, so it has been charging. But I might put um, just some like hot glue or something just around this uh, this rim here. And this hole, if you're wondering, um, this is actually a used light, uh, and that hole used to be the the wire that used to connect up to my original uh, string of these. And yes, it is still a little bit dirty here and there. And actually, this this thing still probably could do with a little bit of a clean. Um, now, if I, should, if I just pop the phone down just for a moment, just so I can take off the top here, and you can sort of see what's going on here. And yes, you're probably wondering what the hell's all that um, white stuff, like that white powdery stuff that's coming out of this thing. Um, I don't actually know. I think it's probably the conformal coating just, you know, coming out from the cracks and stuff like that, and then sort of setting like that. Um, so it's a little bit strange. Um, the actual access hatch here has been um, technically soldered shut, so I melted the plastic, uh, shut this thing pretty tight. So this, well, that is not, that's actually never coming out ever again. And you can't actually see too much there. That's actually a little bit of um, cobweb still left in there. But the light is working, as you can uh, clearly see. Um, with these particular style of um, solar lights, actually, the, the like reflector in here is a little bit different. Now, they, this standard um, cylindrical part is the same. Now, there's obviously that uh, reflective piece at the bottom there, which obviously I have kept in place. Um, but by default, there's another um, sort of plastic insert, which is like a secondary reflector. It is not necessary, and actually it, can, it reduces the light output. So I actually ripped that out, and this actually works better. The only thing I need to do with this um, is just poke a couple um, drainage holes uh, in the bottom of this. Not that I expect moisture to really get into this in any manner of speaking. The final thing to note, the final thing to sort of say about this particular light here is the output of this bulb. Although I, sh I should actually just briefly mention that bulb I had I had to replace because I uh, needed to, well the, the original bulb wasn't particularly um, doing too well. I think it, it had some rust on it. So this new one is actually a high power LED, but it's never going to be driven at full power because of the circuit. I think the circuit actually uh, has a limited current output of what 20 milliamps, and that's one of, and I have one of my 50 milliamp LEDs uh, in there. So it's one of those higher power things. The output itself, uh, if I actually just grab the next image, um, this is back when I was uh, testing the circuit board after I put this modification in. Uh, but the output of one of these uh, solar lights now it does depend on the model of light. Uh, but it's essentially got the LED uh, on, well, I would say the output side of that little uh, green in inductor that you can see there. Um, but the actual output power is merely a, uh, a very high frequency um, pulse of energy. It's not technically as consistent uh, output, but that's just, the, that's just the nature of how the inductor is working. Now you can sort of see at the base of the LED there, if you put a diode and capacitor there, it actually smooths out the voltage. Uh, and gives you a much more consistent and, in my case, um, brighter output. So it's a simple way to boost your output. Um, now, obviously, with uh, if you want to have a diode, it's going to in incur a voltage drop, and obviously you need a, vol a very low voltage drop diode. Uh, the one I got in there, even though it's actually a 1-amp uh, diode, which is a bit... Um, 
a bit overkill. It's actually um, some of these guys here. These are 1N5817s, I believe. If I've got that wrong, I apologize. Uh, but at the current flow in question uh, in this particular application, the forward voltage drop is only about 0.22 volts. It's pretty low, so that's not a problem. And the capacitor there is a bit overkill, but it's technically a salvage capacitor. I have a bunch more in there. Um, these these came from uh, tons of power supplies I have been dismantling recently. Uh, and I think it's like a 50 volt, 22 microfarad, so kind of overkill, but you know, whatever. It does the job. I can't particularly complain here. So that's pretty much all the modifications I've done to this particular unit. And like I said, assuming nothing in, like, just assuming nothing deliberately fails uh, from this, in terms of the components, this should last for many, 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 many years. I can't exactly put an exact figure on here, because, like, well, capacitors, they realistically don't wear out in your standard hu human lifetime here, assuming it's being charged and discharged once, uh, well, you know, one charge, one discharge per day, or in 24 hours, so, you know, it's never going to use, what, the few hundred thousand cycles they have. The LED might fail, but then how, how long do these things have? Like, they have many hundreds of, well, tens of thousands of hours, uh, on them, and it's even being the freaking lights being driven at a lower current, so that's probably going to extend its lifespan yet further. Um, solar panel, how long do these things last for? 15, 20, you know, 25 years, although they do sort of degrade over time. So, in theory, uh, this shouldn't really wear out in in any kind of realistic sense. Although knowing knowing my luck, probably uh, even though it's a bit hard to tell, there's probably like a a break in the conformal coating somewhere. Uh, so there's probably going to be like a failure in, you know, like whether sort of slowly finding a way to corrode, you know, like I said, a, a, a small bit of the circuit board that I have I've missed with the coating. I don't know. Um, but all in all, it's definitely uh, an interesting project, one that I actually would consider a success. Um, although, you know, part of me would have loved to have shoved one of those, <laughs> one of these massive capacitors in there. But, well, if 100 ferrets makes this light light up for nine hours 400 ferrets yeah we're gonna have like what over well way over 24 hours of runtime but to be honest the internal leakage current of a big cat would probably start to drain this faster than this actual circuit ever could so sort of a funny sort of idea hey maybe if i get like a really really big solar panel uh solar panel Pff, i keep saying that if i get a really big solar light maybe i might try and just shove one of these big caps in although I probably won't use my this expensive cap. I might just use one of these Chinese caps, which, to be fair, these things are actually more like 370 farads. They are... Um, actually, you have to ignore the damage to this. These are slightly underrated 400 farads, but, you know, whatever. They are still good caps. Uh, anyway, pretty low leakage current on them, despite their sort of cheap nature and, you know, Chinese quality, you know, all that. So, I'm going to shout out now. Let me, know you, <coughs> let me know what you think of this random project down below in the comments. Uh, link to my Discord is in the description as always. And you'll know the drill by now. So, thank you for watching. I'll see you all in the next video.